So there was something pretty interesting that happened the other day. I think this was two days ago or, or maybe yesterday, actually. I'm not sure exactly uh, when this was. But essentially what happened was you guys all know about the whole force the vote Medicare for all debate going on right now. And so Jimmy Dore, I don't know if I don't think he was hosting. It. I think it's Katie Halper that's hosting it. Um, but it's a force the vote conversation where uh, people came on and talked about, you know, their horrible experiences with the garbage medical system that exists currently. And it was basically a way to kind of rally together, talk about the force the vote strategy, why it's necessary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it kind of went off the ropes here. Now, uh, what I'm going to show you here first is I'm going to show you some clips here of Jimmy Dore. Um, just totally uh, acting kind of crazy. I think he's sipping on some alk there, if I'm not mistaken. I think he has a spit rag. But he does go kind of crazy. And what his big thing here is he's lumping AOC and Nancy Pelosi together. So I want you to check this out. Go ahead. I, I do think that there it's important to draw distinctions between people like AOC and Nancy Pelosi. I mean, I think they're, they're totally Why different. Why is it important? Why is that important? Because Nancy Pelosi is fundamentally opposed to your goal and AOC But if isn't. she votes with Nancy Pelosi, what's the difference, Ben? So, I mean, what I would say is that I think the strategy that she may have for getting a Medicare for all to become a reality may differ from the strategy some what of us- What is her strategy, on. Ben? What has she shared that with you privately? Because she hasn't shared her strategy publicly. So if you have some information, could you share it with us? If you don't have any information, please tell me, uh, please stop telling people that they have a strategy when you know damn well they don't. Well, <laughs> so, I mean, what I would say is right now, I'm not sure what their strategy is. At this they don't have moment, one, Ben. But... Stop saying you're not sure. You have but no they, idea. They have no strategy, and you know it. Stop if, saying you don't know. I what is their strategy? Jimmy, what if, if you know what their strategy is, tell me. If you don't, don't say you don't know. Say they don't have one because they have one. Well, but that I, is I, I, crap, crap, mealy mob doing that, okay. Ben. No, so, well, yeah. let's, hold on. you I are just, dying, Ben. Quit giving politicians the benefit of the doubt. But but that's not what I'm doing. I mean, what I'm saying is I think we have like fairly strong evidence that Alexandria Ocasio Cortez is a strong Medicare for all supporter, right? What is and that she evidence? doesn't oppose. She doesn't oppose the floor vote, right? Like so, I I think well, that that's she's one not thing using her I've... power to get one. Is she using her power to get one, or is she making excuses and you're accepting them? No, I, and again, I mean, I think it's really important to push politicians like, and I believe this about Bernie Sanders. I believe this about Ocasio-Cortez. I, I believe it about Ro Khanna. Like, I, I believe it about anybody in Congress who I think is not right all the time, but usually on our side on most of these issues. I think it's vital to push them. Well, then, but then I think it's how do we define, I, I think that the Jimmy raises an interesting and good point, because I think like a lot of us, you know, I, I have they're not accountable to anyone. I get 10 to 12 million views a month and they won't come out and address my progressive audience. They won't come out and address Bree's audience or Katie's audience or Justin Jackson or you. They are not accountable to us. They are accountable to the whoever themselves. Let's not kid ourselves. As Chris Hedges taught us a long time ago, the people attracted to politics are the most mediocre of people. They're not your friends. They are elected servants and stop treating them that way. I hear Brownie is uh, seconding you in the background. They're not your friends. They're the people standing in between us, health care. They're putting their little position ahead of that. Don't get that. Who, yeah. are you, who are you talking about with that, Jimmy? I'm talking about anybody who's a progressive in Congress who isn't endorsing hashtag the vote. All those mothers who didn't show up today at our town hall, every one of them is selling you out and canceling you for their own personal gain. So, I mean, there are really a couple of things to see there. First of all, obviously, you can tell that he's he's being extremely, extremely, um, obviously loud, a prick, an asshole, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, definitely cursing a lot as well. I don't really know how you're supposed to have a conversation with something like that. It does lead me to believe that Jimmy Dore has substance abuse issues. 
I mean, if you didn't know that was Jimmy Dore, you'd probably think he's some kind of a crackhead or your drunk uncle, pretty much. Um, that's probably what you would think he is. So he's kind of crazy going on here, obviously. But the assertion he's trying to make is somehow that AOC and Nancy Pelosi are the same. AOC and Nancy Pelosi are obviously extremely different. AOC has brought issues like Medicare for All, Green New Deal, 70% uh, marginal tax rate, all into the public discourse. Obviously, Bernie Sanders brought in Medicare for All into the public discourse, and AOC continued to push it through. Um, and so what's going on is there's currently a strategic difference between different groups, some people wanting uh, AOC and the Justice Democrats to withhold their vote in exchange for Medicare for All floor vote, um, others saying there's opportunity costs, we should get $15 minimum wage through and those kinds of things instead of a floor vote for Medicare for All because the M4A one won't pass, but we can get $15 minimum wage through. So there's kind of a debate going on right now, right? And I think the debate is totally fine to have. It's an interesting one for sure. You know, do you hold the floor vote and then sort of use the vote against, uh, you know, potential opponents of the bill? I think, you know, it definitely could be a good idea for sure. It could definitely have some uh, benefits for sure um you know could there be some downsides maybe i don't know it could be potentially but i think uh, the force the vote idea is not a bad idea and i think a lot of people at this point they're different camps basically because jimmy Dore has kind of become the forefront of this whole issue now people are kind of starting to zone in on him right um now my my really only main gripe with this issue really the only one at all is sort of this idea that's being pushed by Jimmy Dore and some others, but mainly Jimmy Dore, that AOC and Nancy Pelosi are somehow the same, right? These people are completely diametrically opposed ideologically, very obviously. AOC supports Medicare for All, Free College, Green New Deal, all of this other stuff, right? We all know that. It's sort of, it's sort of gaslighting to say that they're the same. Uh, but what you can also see is in this call... There's basically all of these people are really scared to say anything, to challenge Jimmy Dore. Nobody's like, all right, calm down, dude. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, calm down. Stop fucking yelling. Um, but they're too scared because Katie Halper and Brianna Joy Gray, if they, they're kind of held sort of hostage by Jimmy Dore, especially Katie Halper. Um, they share a lot of the same audience. And so Jimmy Dore has a lot of rabid fans who I'm sure are going to come to this video. Um, and so they don't want that to pull away. The Katie Halper doesn't want to lose a bunch of Patreon subscribers who are Jimmy Dore supporters. So they're too scared to say anything, right? They're sort of held hostage by Jimmy Dore. And so that's why Jimmy Dore is able to be a sort of a vociferous douchebag and kind of continue with it. It's totally false that Nancy Pelosi and AOC are the same. It's totally bogus. Um, but what I saw was interesting was on the first episode of the podcast with Kyle Kalinske and Crystal Ball. Crystal Ball basically complained that, oh, you know, they're trying to uh, pit us as, you know, anti-AOC and all of this stuff. Um, and Kyle explains that, you know, he explains not only that he's not anti-AOC, but he actually explains his opinion as to why AOC and Nancy Pelosi are actually not the same. So I want you to go ahead and check this out. The people on your side, why wouldn't you want to make that abundantly clear? And That's create right. a and and make it clear like who is on the side of the people and who is not, because look, the whole Democratic Party pretends to be on the side of the people, pretends to support some sort of health care as a human right. Like, why wouldn't you at this critical moment want to make things completely clear for people? And the other part of this debate that has been kind of frustrating in the way that it's played out and the way that both of us have been portrayed in this is we've been portrayed as the anti-AOC left. Ridiculous. Listen. Which is like, and it annoys me on so many levels because the, the part, probably the part of it that annoys me the most is this idea that politics should be covered as like almost like a celebrity culture thing where you're in somebody's camp or you're in somebody else's camp. No, like we have certain values and principles and if you support those, that's great and we're going to, support you supporting those principles, give credit to anyone who is like driving things forward in a positive direction. And we're going to critique when that's not the case. It doesn't make you anti this person or that person. It's just like completely ridiculous to me. I am a co-founder <laughs> of Justice Democrats. The idea that I'm against our number one star who succeeded yeah. is beyond ridiculous. What I'm trying to do 
is hold the organization and the politicians to the original principles that we founded it for. Right. That's what I'm trying to do. The whole idea was one of the original names that we floated, Jenk and I were having these conversations, was Left Tea Party. What if we called it the Left Tea Party? Yeah. Because that was the idea. If you have these unapologetic, really strong people on the left, what can we get done? What can we accomplish? How far can we drag the conversation back to the left? Can we actually win on some of these really important issues? And so to to describe me as anti-AOC left, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like, I'm obviously having a strategic disagreement and trying to make her do the thing that I thought she was going to do in the first place. And also, let me add, I don't think, and this is where I think some people misstate this and get this wrong, it's not that if they don't do this strategy, they're corrupt. No, they're not. They're obviously not corrupt. They're, she's not the new Nancy Pelosi if she doesn't do this strategy. Mm -hmm. That's nonsense. Because the fundamental difference is she doesn't take corporate money. She doesn't take big money. She only takes through small dollar donations. And if you actually go to the voting record, 98 to 99 percent of the time, she's going to vote the way you want her to vote. Whereas Nancy Pelosi is only going to vote the way you want her to vote 60 percent of the time. Right. Huge difference. Gigantic difference. So it's not it's not like I'm aligning their intentions or I'm calling them corrupt. Right. or I'm saying they're they've sold out. Not at all. I'm saying you're making a strategic blunder because you're trying to play the game from within the system when you're up against the Machiavellian master who's always going to win in those backroom negotiations, is always going to roll you, is always going to stab you in the back. And so stop playing that backroom game. Right. Use the only power you have, which is the bully pulpit. And unfortunately, they're not doing it yet, but we're trying to force them to do it, and we'll see what comes of that. I mean, it So Kyle Kalinske there is explaining that Nancy Pelosi and AOC are not the same because AOC is funded by small dollar donations, and you know she supports progressive issues. I obviously agree with Kyle Kalinske. I think that... Um, I think that, you know, Kyle was also really pissed off about being lumped in with this group. But in my opinion, I feel like if you're not really vocally sort of uh, condemning this kind of, uh, you know, completely ridiculous thought, AOC and Nancy Pelosi are the same. There are groups on the left now, or the left, who are, suppo who are now essentially saying, you know, AOC is the next Nancy Pelosi. Some people are already saying AOC is the next Nancy Pelosi. So essentially everything that's already been built up, let's just nuke it all and somehow figure out a way forward. I don't even know what the plan there is. But it's absolutely ridiculous. If you are somebody who indeed does support force the vote for Medicare for All, that's totally fine. But the minute you start saying stupid shit like AOC and Nancy Pelosi are the same or... AOC is standing between you and healthcare is absolutely batshit crazy. Um, and these people, even like Kyle Kalinske there, he's he's too scared to really directly call people out for that. He'll just kind of bitch and moan about being plugged in with the same group instead of actively going out. You know, he sent out a couple tweets, right? But he usually does it only when it's him being lumped in with those people. He's not willing to actively condemn the people who are saying this. And he sure as hell isn't going to actively go after Jimmy Dore for the crazy stuff that he's saying. Because he's, he's too, you know, he's too scared as well, obviously. He doesn't want the backlash as well. Um, definitely a lot of his fans are Jimmy Dore fans as well. So he's, he's afraid. So basically, there's a bunch of these people who are too afraid to cause this backlash by basically being like, you know, hey, Jimmy, uh, and hey, anybody really who's saying this, uh, you're dead wrong, right? So he's willing to say it in those kinds of contexts, but he's not really willing to actively say it. But um, obviously, I agree with Kyle Kalinske here. And again, I just have to say, the only issue I have with this whole thing is that Jimmy Dore is saying that Nancy Pelosi and AOC are the same. It's absolutely crazy. He's obviously not a healthy person, definitely dealing with a lot of substance issues. And if you disagree, you're absolutely wrong. Um, but I don't know what's going to happen from here forward, but, you know, I think Kyle Kalinske is somebody who is one of the more sane people on this issue. Um, I just really take issue with this whole AOC and Pelosi are the same thing. Um, it, because I really do view it as extremely uh, destructive because you kind of build something up in Justice Democrats, you're finally starting to get off the ground again. You got to remember, man, um, you know, when the Justice Democrats got their first representative, Literally in 2018. So it's been two years, okay? It's really been two years, you know, two and a half years. And now there's another, finally another Congress coming in, right? We're having a new Congress for the first time since they got elected. There were like five or six of them in the House. People really need to keep context in their minds and really understand what this is, right? You have 
a bunch of corporate Democrats, you have an entire corporate sellout Republican Party, and then you have like five like Justice Democrats and then maybe like 10 to 20, you know, progressives, right? And you're all of a sudden expecting to get Medicare for all and all this crazy shit. You need to understand context and we're really trying to build something up. We got a big sort of infusion with Cori Bush and Marie Newman and Jamal Bowman and all these people. And you have people like Jessica Cisneros and other candidates who I do believe have a real shot to win the second time or the third time that they run. And so when you're talking about really building a movement um, and really building power, right, you kind of need that sort of protest group as well as actually having politicians in there. And so just basically condemning all of the progressive politicians like AOC and Ilhan and all these people and trying to say that, oh, they're not progressives is just ridiculous. They obviously just differ on strategy opinion saying, hey, there's opportunity costs with this force to vote. Um, you know, we can try to pass $15 minimum wage, which all of a sudden people are trying to act like $15 minimum wage is not a real progressive issue, which I think is ridiculous. But basically saying we don't have the numbers to pass M4A, we should focus on those first. Um, and so that's, they differ strategically. Do they actually oppose Medicare for all? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. And so that's the main issue that I take here. But Kyle Kalinske definitely, I think, uh, would be better off being more clear about this and more actively condemning people. Uh, I would like to see Kyle Kalinske more actively condemning this kind of, uh, you know, verbiage and just kind of, uh, ridiculous sayings because I really do believe it does serious damage to the movement. I really do believe that. 